Hello everybody, and a very warm welcome to LMT YouTube channel. Prince Harry has spearheaded a new mental fitness tool aimed at helping the military with their well-being. Former soldier Harry appears in a video on Headed.org, which has been designed to offer round the clock access to self-help tools to enhance mood, drive and confidence. Today when we talk about fitness, we don't just mean how fast you can run or how much weight you can carry. This is about mental fitness, strength and resilience. Not just while wearing the uniform, but for the rest of your life. If you want to be truly fit, strong and healthy, you need to train your mind and body as one. Some people run, others swim, cycle or lift weights in order to be physically fit. But what do you do to stay mentally fit? Think about what you could do to unlock your potential and to perform at the highest level. Whatever your role in defence, HeadFit is a resource designed for anyone to use, whether you're out at sea, in the office, in the sky or out in the field. So make sure you have a good look around the website where you'll find a collection of videos, audio tools and written resources that will help you stay mentally fit and on top of your game. HeadFit is an asset to improve your drive, confidence, mood and ability to de-stress at work and at home. First important point to take on board if you can get to grips with paying more attention to how you think, feel and behave in particular situations, you're much more likely to be able to make a choice about how you respond to that situation, to life around you. We've used two psychological models to underpin all of the tools on HeadFit. The first is the cognitive model. The basic idea is this. We're made up of thoughts, feelings, physical self and behaviours. These four aspects are constantly feeding into each other. Only when we know how they're connected can we then start to consciously choose how to respond to things in a way that is useful to us. For example, positive thoughts can create positive behaviours, which can make us feel good about ourselves. The key thing to know is that we can promote a positive cycle or interrupt a negative cycle by changing the way we think or by choosing a more positive behaviour. These simple changes can have a really positive impact on our well-being and our ability to perform every day. It sounds simple, but it really is effective. The second model is the emotional regulation model, which helps us understand that we have three different emotional systems which constantly feed into each other. When we know how to balance these systems, we can better manage our emotions. Achieving that balance really is essential to our mental fitness. So, the first system is the fight, flight and freeze system, also known as the threat system, which is designed to help us survive. However, there are times when it can work against us. For example, if we're stuck in a traffic jam and we feel anxious, stressed or angry, these emotions ignited by the threat system aren't useful to us at all. So we need to try and balance that out. And one of our other emotional systems, the soothing system, can help with this. If we use soothing based strategies, such as flexible thinking, breathing, and being kind to ourselves, we get a surge of happy hormones that leaves us feeling safe and content. These allow us to calm the threat system down and restore balance again. Being kind to ourselves is also useful for keeping the third system, the drive system, in check. When we achieve something great, like a promotion or winning a competition, we get excited or energised. It feels good, so we want to keep on doing it, but can end up neglecting other areas of our lives by focusing on just this one thing. Our soothing system, once again, will help us to balance that out as well. So, it serves to remember that being kind and compassionate to ourselves really is essential to our mental fitness. So the three emotional systems have their own unique roles, but the trick is to keep them balanced. 
HeadFit for Life will help you do that and help you choose positive ways of thinking and behaving. We've designed a number of tools based on the two models that will help you reach four particular goals to improve your confidence, your drive, to change your mood and to de-stress. We have created three easy steps to each tool which will require you to simply stop, challenge, change. Stop means take yourself off autopilot. Take a moment to check in with yourself and how you are responding to things. How are you behaving and what are you thinking? Then challenge your thinking and your behaviour. Are they actually helping you or do you need to make some changes? If you don't think the way you are thinking or behaving is resulting in a positive outcome for you, then take this opportunity to make a change. Choose a goal, choose a tool, and help yourself feel better, happier, and ultimately more effective in your life. Not all the tools and strategies work for everyone, so the idea with HeadFit is you find out what tool works best for you. So for some people, if they want to de-stress, breathing techniques really work for them. For other people, getting outside and into a bit of green works much better. Or if you're preparing for an upcoming challenge, for example, and need a boost, positive self-talk may really help. Or maybe body posture feedback would work better for you. All the tools are simple and take a very short amount of time, but they can contribute towards your mental fitness daily. Is a resource for everyone. Whatever your job, whatever your rank, whatever you've got going on at home. Our service personnel are vital role models in society and we need you to be able to access that extra 10, maybe 15%. Something that can only be attained when you adopt a regular routine for training the mind and the body as one single unit. I know this to be true, it works for me. So for yourself, but also those around you, find which resources work for you, unlock your potential and strive to be head fit life. In other news, these are Harry and Meghan's thoughts on a second child. On March 31, 2020, Prince Harry and Meghan Markle officially bid adieu to their wives as senior royals. The couple's imminent departure loomed over the royal family for several months after Harry and Meghan announced their plans to step down via Instagram in January 2020. While initially it seemed like members of the royal family were having a difficult time coping with the couple's resignation, at the time of their departure, Meghan and Harry appeared to be in a better place with the royal family. That being said, it seemed like Meghan and Harry couldn't get out fast enough. Following the couple's farewell tour, Meghan and Harry truly started gearing up to live their best lives. While they were initially hiding out, Air living in Canada. In March 2020, the couple, and baby Archie, of course, made the move to Los Angeles. Now that Meghan and Harry have managed to put some distance between themselves and the royal family, literally, it's safe to say that they're probably looking toward the next phase of their lives, which apparently includes a new organization and a job at Disney. But does it include a little brother or sister for Archie? Here's what we know. Harry and Meghan aren't rushing into anything. No sooner had Prince Harry and Meghan Markle announced their engagement than the media started asking the couple when the world would get to welcome a new royal baby. During an interview with the BBC in November 2017, the same month the pair made their announcement, a newly engaged couple was asked whether they planned to start a family to which Harry replied, I think eventually, one step at a time, and we'll start a family in the near future. Less than two years after Harry made that promise, the couple announced the arrival of baby Archie in May 2019. According to a new as weekly source, as of March 2020, Meghan and Harry are enjoying these precious early days with their little one. That being said, Archie could be getting a sibling in the near future. The source told us that the couple will be trying in earnest pretty soon. However, for the time being, they just want to get firmly settled into their new surroundings first, a 
and give Archie as much attention as they can. While Megan and Carrie are reportedly committed to giving Archie a brother or sister, the source noted that they don't want to put too much pressure on the situation. So there you have it. Megan and Harry aren't done having kids like Kate Middleton and Prince William, but don't expect a royal baby announcement in the immediate future. So just how many future baby announcements can we expect from these two? How many kids do Meghan and Harry want? These days, Prince Harry and Meghan Markle are giving all their attention to Archie, but apparently, it won't be long before little Archie becomes a big brother. Additionally, it doesn't seem like his parents' attention will be spread too thin. In a 2019 interview with his good friend, conservationist Jane Goodall, that just so happened to appear in Meghan's desk, edited British Vogue September issue, Harry revealed just how many kids he and Meghan want, two, maximum. While big brother Prince William has three children, Harry wouldn't be the only royal who opted to stop at two. Harry's father, Prince Charles, obviously has two kids. Additionally, Princess Anne, the Queen's only daughter, is mother to Peter Phillips and Zara Tyndall, while Prince Andrew, one of Charles' brothers, is father to Princess Beatrice and Princess Eugenie. Considering the fact that Meghan and Harry are doing their own thing, their kids' lives will probably look a little different from the lives of their royal relatives. That being said, only time will tell what the future holds for the new generation of royal kids. So there you have it. That's all the news on Meghan and Prince Harry's situation today. As always, thanks for listening. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and press that notification bell if you want to be notified of future videos. Thank you. Don't stop.